And to Sir Alec Ferguson, CBE. Alec, of course, as we've heard, uh, was in the Boys Brigade, was uh, brought up in uh, Govan Road with his mum and dad and his brother Martin. Uh, and we're delighted that Martin is with us uh, as well uh, this evening. Uh, Sir Alec speaks often about his uh, time in the school and what the school uh, gave to him in terms of that uh, determination and discipline and his great desire to become a football player. And of course, uh, he served his time as a, as a toolmaker and became a, a, a skilled engineer, but still that desire to become a football player. And that, of course, was fulfilled with Queen's Park and St. Johnston and Rangers and Dunfermline and Falkirk and Air United. And uh, he played for, representatively for the Scottish League uh, a couple of times as well. And then into management. Firstly with East Stirlingshire, then with uh, St Mirren, and it was, uh, it was great. I was speaking myself at a burn supper in the Partick Bowling Club on Friday night, and one of Sir Alex's players from uh, St Mirren, Jack McGilvery, came and, and spoke to me. And uh, he was saying, as we would expect, such great things about uh, you as a person and as a, a manager. Then from St Mirren on... More famously to Aberdeen, with great success at Aberdeen, and of course now with Manchester United for all of these years. It would be ridiculous for me to, uh, to go through the, the successes that Sir Alec has had as a football manager. Um, I could never possibly remember them, they are so numerous. But I think that... Uh, it would be my assessment, as a Hede, not as a football pundit, but as a Hede, that this man, Sir Alec Ferguson, is surely, at the very least, the greatest British football manager there has ever been. And time will, will tell, but perhaps the greatest football manager the world has seen. And Sir Alec, I know that your fellow Governites are very proud of you and your successes. And I, as the, the head teacher of your old school, am uh, I'm, I'm similarly uh, proud. But what I'm most grateful for uh, of all is, again, I mentioned that your generosity of spirit, your interest in what's going on in the school, your uh, support in general terms for the school and, and what we're trying to do. The fact that you, you're such an inspiration uh, for all of the young people uh, who come here. And even uh, most recently, that we've got another hopefully significant project uh, on the go that I can't really speak about uh, just now, but Sir Alex's been helping us out with that. And there could potentially be really big news for the school and the community um, with that in the not too uh, distant future. So for all of that, uh, Sir Alec, and uh, for your forbearance uh, this evening, which is uh, much uh, appreciated, it gives me um, the greatest of pleasure, and I'm, I'm very humble to be able to do this, to ask Sir Alec Ferguson to come forward and accept his induction into the Govan High School Hall of Fame. Thanks, Ian, and, and I join in with uh, my fellow Hall of Fame members and all the things that have been said today about the values are true. Any young person listening today, they're saying, Boys Brigade, church. That was part of our life. We grew up with that. That gives a foundation, a Christian foundation. Absolutely perfect. Boys Brigade. Let's tell you a story about the Boys Brigade. We had a uh, Officer called Johnny Borwin, a fanatic, a prisoner of war, escaped the day the war finished. How unlucky is that? <laughs> but when he used to go into school, the, the BB camps to Stonehaven, and he used to put the list up of what we had to bring. 
what knife. You know, it's two pillar, metal plate, or the toothbrush, sannies. But the first on the list, that my boots. <laughs> it was unbelievable. You know what I'm going to tell you? He's 90 years of age. He lives in Burnside. He's got gold, he's got gold posts in his garden. He goes out once a week in the garden and shoots the ball in the net. 90 years of age. Now, does that not give you an example, you young people, what you can do with your life? <laughs> the Burns family lived above me on Govan Road. We lived above the Plaza Cafe. Italians. <laughs> now, he gave you a cone if you could spell his name. It's R O C C. R O C C I C H I O L I, right? This is, this is true. It's a fantastic story. So, Tommy's brother Eddie, and you quite well, died in Stanford, uh, California. And I phoned him to commiserate and ask how Betty's wife was and things like that. He said, You know, I met last week walking down the road there with his dog. I said, No, he says, Johnny Rocky Cook is wrong. I said, He's joking. He says, Still alive. He said, Oh, yeah. I says, could you give me his number? And I'll give him a call. He says, okay, yeah. So I call, and this is daughter, she must be in her 60s, answers the phone. I'm going back about seven years ago. Mr. Rocky Coy, Alec Ferguson, I don't know if you remember, lived above you in the Plaza Cafe. Oh, Alec, so, oh, of course I remember you. Remember the things I used to say to you, behave yourself and all that? I used to try and steal the hot peas. I said, oh, no, sorry, sorry, but I've never paid you yet. <laughs> anyway, I says, how, how are you doing? He says, oh, great. He says, I joined art school two years ago, 83 years of age. He joined art school. Do you believe that? Two weeks later, in comes a patron of, the, of Aaron. He joined it. And it's, it's in one of my, my rooms to this day. You know, that, you, you know the thing I said a few weeks, months ago? Retirement's for young people because you can do something. He keeps on working because he needs to work. He needs to do something. Of course, the art college is 83 years of age. That's what you can achieve with your life. If you've got the perseverance and the energy, you need energy, of course. And where do you get your energy from? Your upbringing. Our, our bedroom, our kitchen in Govan Road was somebody should have filmed it. My dad in the morning. Martin, we eat that bloody porridge! The whole bloody neighborhood could hear it. I get these bloody boots cleaned. All these, and you're away again. Oh, it was, it was hilarious. But that installed this foundation of timekeeping. Well, absolutely perfect. I'm never late. I'm never late. I wait every morning at six o'clock. I, I leave the house at quarter to seven. I'm in the training ground at seven. It's a habit. It's a fantastic habit. When people are late, I get annoyed with them. I get annoyed when the people are late. You know, I've never found a player once for being late. You know what I say to them? You're letting your team down. You're letting me down. We're preparing for a training session. You're late. And that's the last thing. They're never late again. Responsibility. It's a fantastic thing to have. And you know, all the values of the, of the, we're talking about today, these are foundations of your life. They never leave you. And when, when people leave Govan, they leave with determination and a character that they can take them anywhere in the world. I was up doing an interview in the shipyards in Fairfields. And I was up in the, it was the middle of a bloody winter. I was up one of the, the boats, the, 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 the platforms, oil platforms, it's freezing. The wind's coming howling down the Clyde. And there's a young boy interviewing me, and his hand's shaking with the cold. He's absolutely freezing. He says, what do you think's giving you the character that you've got? As you feel that wind, son. What do you think of this? Do people work here? So we take that, and you also, and there's a few of it, Frank, Bill, myself, Willie. I've actually left the country, and Bob left the country. Danny, you know when it stayed. When you leave to go to another country, you cannot fail. You're taking Scotland with you. You know, and, and I always say that. And remember Jim Telfer says to the, the rugby players, he says, in the case, it's, it's occasion when they play in England, your body does not belong to you, it belongs to Scotland. And you take that with you. You look at all through the world, the Carolinas, you know, speaking Gaelic in the Carolinas up to 1920. 
You know that? In America. They're speaking Gaelic up to 1920. Today you still find in towns and down in Texas and all Scottish towns. It's fantastic. You walk you go to another part of the world, you see Scotland everywhere. But buddy, that, that these toners are here today. All that mob went over to Canada in 1959, my dad's side of it. There's about a million over there. I had a, we had a reunion with him in the, when we played in Toronto. I mean, he was there, Martin. I <laughs> 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 But uh, it's fantastic to take the Scottishness somewhere, honestly, it is. Because, and I come back here and I see the intelligence of the people, I see what's happening. I was doing in government this morning. There's a lot happening in government. And it needs people and energy to keep driving it on. Because we've got a great history. And there's a lot of people who don't have a history. You know what I mean? They don't have a history. And we've got history here, and we should all remember that. Look, it's been a fantastic privilege to come here. It's an honor to receive this award. And I'm always proud of everything that you achieve. Everything that's happening in Govan, I'm always proud of it. So well done to you all of you. So to Sir Alec Ferguson and to all the Hall of Famers, the honour has been ours too. Thank you very much. Uh, I wish you all Godspeed and a safe journey home.